Am I live? I'm live. Hello. All right, I'm going to be inviting on my guest. Uh, today we are here talking about The Voice, not the TV show, um, our voice. And what does it mean to have a thing to be a good singer? How do we find our authentic sound? Uh, here she is. Hi. I'm here. Hello. So exciting. So excited to see you. Okay, okay. so um, I'll just say first, uh, I'm Nechamalea Dehan. I'm a singer. I'm a voice teacher, and I help women um, access their authentic voices, build confidence, and I have the amazing Chaya Sarak with me, who I met... <laughs> Oh, should I tell the first story of how we met? <laughs> well, yeah, sure. <laughs> I came to my house to babysit my kid <laughs> when she was like in between teaching and just kind of like, you know, it was before she went and traveled and did all these amazing things. And um, she told me she was a songwriter, a songwriting teacher. And I was like, oh my gosh, Mina Shemaim, like, it is no question you're landed here in my house for a purpose because I really <laughs> want to write songs. And I hadn't really been writing songs at the time. So um, then when she came back from her travels, I, I messaged her. I was like, you have to teach me. So she's been teaching me songwriting for, for, a, little, for a little bit. Yeah. And it's been awesome. It actually was a back and forth. I remember um, we kept reaching out to each other and it just didn't work out. And like yeah. I think it was quite a few months that we tried to make it work until we're like, that's it. And, yeah. Um, and I'm so glad that we did now. Same here. So, so <laughs> glad. So, um, and Chaya is not only a, a songwriting, a songwriter and songwriting teacher. She sings. She uh, just wrote a screenplay. Like, she wears many hats. Chaya, you want to tell us about all the hats? <laughs> yes. Actually, today I was thinking because I always introduce, now I introduce myself as a creative when people ask me, who am I? Because it used to be, I'm a music student. For five years, I told people I'm a music student. And then I graduated and I was like, oh, I can't say that anymore. Mm -hmm. And and so I think when you're creative, it goes, it just bleeds into all areas, which is a gift but it also demands focus and it's very easy to get carried away with many different passions and projects. And, um, and I realized that I love music. I also, you know, majored in voice, but writing was really, really my thing. It kind of happened when I was in college, I was like, I want to write a TV show about this. So I have a script about this. Like somehow it just, my writing was just happening. I didn't even realize that that's what I'd end up pursuing but now I'm like a writer and a creative. So a creative I'll always be, but now my focus is on writing and it really connects with, connects with the idea of the voice. I mean, like, no questions. So we'll, we'll get oh, into that. I was just talking yeah. about that with one of my voice students actually, because she's a writer, like a, I don't know, a copywriter or some type of thing. And like, she's so used to having a voice in that, like for a writer, like you are always expressing yourself. You're always putting yourself out there, but putting it into words or putting it into the physical voice makes it so much like more real and vulnerable, I guess you could say. Yes. Anyway, 100%. so that we want to talk a, to start a little bit talking about like, why do we, why do we learn technique? Like, so we're here to talk about like the voice and how do we access our like most authentic voice. And you might think like, why do I need to, can't I just sing from my heart? Like, why do I need to spend all this money studying with a teacher or whatever, you know, um, and voice teacher here, right? So like slightly biased, but um, me and Chai were talking how, you know, a technique, using your technique or learning a technique is a way to sort of like, unravel or unpeel back the layers of your voice that you might not have known were, were there. I have a student right now who just told me, actually, she just sent me like a really nice testimonial um, saying something like, I, you know, I didn't know that I had all of this to my voice. Like I, I, after lessons, I realized I was using like a sliver of my voice or something like that, she said. And um, so that's the reason, like, right, right. So we're not here to like say, oh, you have to learn how to riff and you have to sing like as high as Dina Menzel or all these things, but, but learning technique can help you to pull out your real 
the real voice, the real, the real you. Hi, did you want yeah. to say something about that? <laughs> yeah, so much. I have so much to say. No, um, because I actually was like, you know, I sang my whole life in choirs and school and I was, that was like my thing. And, you know, in school there, I was like, louder, higher, you know, and you're just like screaming on top of your lungs. So I was always used to singing in the higher notes. And I was sure that I was a soprano, you know, like, and when I came to music school, I was very hesitant about um, voice because we were able to choose an instrument or voice lessons. And I was like, I don't know. I really like my voice the way it is. I'm going to end up sounding like someone else. It's not me. And then I realized, you know, go for it. If you don't like it, just stop. And I ended up taking four years of voice lessons. It was life changing. I mean, I ended up like people back in Montreal heard me singing a few years back, a few years later after I was like, did my voice training and they were like, whoa, like your voice changed so much. And for me, I had discovered the range that just made so much more sense to me. And it was, it was very new for me because like I said, I was always singing really high and now I love singing like low, that, that low register just it feels very much me and I know that I can also use the higher notes when I need it you know like go so I have now my voice has different colors and it's kind of like what we were saying about the map it's just like you're walking through like when you learn how to sing by yourself without voice training it's like you get to explore your house your garden that's it you're not going anywhere else <laughs> and then when you're doing the voice training, you're suddenly like discovering so many areas and you get to choose when, you know, when each part is appropriate in your performance. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot more to say about, you know, like, anyways, keep going. I love that analogy. Like, oh, wow, there's this porch behind my house I never knew about. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. 100%. And you're, and you're so right about what you said about like, in performance, you get to choose. And that's really what I tell my students all the time is that, yes, you can sing it that way. You can sing that note in chest voice. You could sing that note in head voice. That's not really for me to decide. You get to decide that. That's part of your, that's part of your journey yes. as a singer. But the yes. point for me is to get you to be able to do either of them and not, not exactly. do it, because, not do either of them because that's the only way you know how, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a really, that's a great reason obviously to be, to be taking, um, to be taking voice lessons. And, um, yeah. oh, I want to bring up this quote that I, I had posted on Instagram, I think a while back and I, I sent it to you, I think. Um, what is the quote? The only reason for mastering technique is to make sure that your body does not get in, in the way of expressing your soul. Yes. Oh my God. I love and it. I think the person that wrote it was actually a dancer, but it totally applies to singing. And that's yeah, why, that's, yeah. that's really at the end of the day, like why we're here, right? We're here to express, express our souls. We're here to express yeah. something that's divine or whatever, however you want to talk about it. But, um, it, but sometimes our bodies do get in the way because of like just tension or fear or whatever it is. And like we hold and we grab and we, you know, whatever things that just like they snowball over time because this is kind of how we sing since we yeah. were five or, you know, whatever. And, right. um, and so, so vocal training is about that process of sort of like, like I said, unraveling all of that. Can I just add a little, I mean, a little something. Um, also we don't realize, I mean, as singers, we don't realize how vulnerable we are when we sing. Like it took me years to really, I mean, I was always like, no, I'm super comfortable. I'm still very comfortable on stage. But recently in the last year, people were like, I, I was like, I don't even feel comfortable performing in front of women. Like I feel, it's so <laughs> vulnerable, you know? Yeah, forget the men. And it was very like, yeah. yeah. But um, what I wanted to say as well is that when you do learn voice training, we realize that first of all, the throat is everything we hold back from saying gets built up over here. Mm -hmm. So when you hear yourself sing, you can see exactly the places that you, that are blocked. And so there's a lot of emotional psychological work that goes into voice training as well. And for me, it was like meeting myself 
all the time in voice training. And it was like, wow, I have a lot to work on. You know, it's like every time we hold back from crying or hold back from saying something, it stays here. It needs to get out sometime. Yeah. So you hear it in your voice and you hear it, um, you know, these blockages. Um, anyways, go ahead. As, we could talk all day about that. Cause it's no. so <laughs> it's even yeah. something as subtle, even something as subtle as like, I'm not sure if I can hit that note. I see it all the time. Right. I see it. I, I see and hear the doubt in a, in a, in a singer's voice, you know, in my students' voices and for myself also, yeah. because I also struggle with that sometimes. I also struggle yeah. with feeling like, you know, yeah, I got this or just feeling like I'm, you know, like, have something worthy to say whatever it is you know like and what what that in the back of your head can totally affect how it comes out but yeah i think we could talk more about that later <laughs> yeah um but i also wanted to mention about vocal health right like yeah we not all of us are like aspiring singers that here on, on the call necessarily i'm not sure but um if you are someone who really is actually it doesn't really matter if you're if you're a singer only, if you're a vocalist in any regard, like if you speak for a living, if you're a teacher, mm -hmm. a lot of us are teachers, if you're, you know, if you do speak, um, you know, go to conferences, whatever, like anything that involves the voice on a daily basis, <laughs> just being a person, <laughs> if you're a talkative person, right. um, you, we have to take care of our voice because any, we need longevity, right? We're, we're aiming for longevity. And, and that's really a, a big, huge reason why why you would want to to train your voice that you're that you're not using it from a place of um, tension or overuse or you know you don't develop chesed like nodes or anything like that. So yeah, yeah, because um, there are there are artists out there and a lot of us like aspire to sound like them, who who didn't use their voice so well. Like right, um, give examples. Like, um, I hate to say this because I like these artists, but like Adele, right. Adele, for instance, and she's very open yeah. about it. Like Adele, um, you know, she kind of had this like really big belty, like, uh, like, and you know, a part of it I'm sure is because she performed so much, you know, so like, so a little bit of shady technique with, with, you know, with the fact that she was performing so many shows all the time, I'm sure, um, gave her problems and she had to have surgery. Um, and Miley Cyrus also had vocal surgery. You can hear it right. in her voice. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't hear her post surgery. I haven't like analyzed her videos or anything, but um, but you could hear her before that. It, she has a very raspy voice, very like you know sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a little uh, rough for her. So these are reasons why. And like you don't want to go in surgery if you don't have to, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And you want your voice yeah, to be like clean and, and there for you. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about why should you have voice training? You know, like, what does it mean? What is it finding the voice? But like, even deeper than that, like we wanted to talk about kind of the whole thing of this talk was finding your authentic sound, right? Like finding a singer's, like their own voice. So, mm -hmm. and you, you talked, you mentioned a little bit about it earlier of like through your time in voice lessons, you discovered like, oh wow, my voice really wants to sit here or, um, right. you know, whatever you want to tell, can you talk a little bit about sure. like your experience? I think you have a really you like really unique experience being in a in the pr type of program that you were in. Like I was a classically yeah. trained, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But I think right. um, your story is really cool. Right. So I spent I lived on like basically I call it a music campus, but it was because there was uh, my college was there and my music school was there, two separate schools. One was classical, one was jazz. So on the one hand, I was singing jazz, improvising, all that kind of stuff, and, and Israeli songs, of course, and rock, basically everything. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then I was also learning opera, like uh, German opera, Italian operas. Uh, we didn't do French because I speak French, so they wanted to challenge me. But um, so it was just, I was like hungry for all of it. I wanted all of it. I wanted to sing. I, I fell in love with opera. I never thought I would. Um, but I do remember in my first year of school, um, everyone, there was this, there was this, this pressure of like, who has the biggest, who has like the widest range, you know, like I can sing up to, you know, like F sharp. I don't know. Like, so there was like, kind of like this, 
you know, who has the, the best range, who has the, who sings more like this really famous singer. There was kind of, it was very superficial. And I remember at the end of the year, I, um, I realized I was like, Chaya, forget it. Just forget it. What you should do is focus on your voice. It will be what it is and see what you can get out of it. And I remember the moment I made that switch, I actually was a little bit extreme. I remember we were sitting outside the music school and I told my friends, I'm like, guys, I just want to know that I'm going to die with my own voice, you know? And I remember it was such an extreme <laughs> statement. My friends That's were like, so oh my dramatic. God. Like, <laughs> it very dramatic. But it also like, for me, it like, it was also, I want to also make sure that I'm expressing me and no one else. You know, so it was a very, like, it was a very big statement. Were you all, can but, I ask you, were you always like that? Like, was that I'm always like, a, a little bit. <laughs> I wish I, have, I was yes. more like that during music school, because then I would have maybe found it sooner. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Simply, it's just very me. Like, for me, it was always like, what is my thing? Who am I? Like, very, like, passionate, intense a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah, because it didn't make sense. I would like, I remember meeting girls who would sing even now, like I can't even listen to like YouTube and all those covers. And I'm like, it's just, you know, you just want the person. I don't care about the technique, you know, just give me, you know, give me something real. So I remember when I realized that I, I started to, I, I like the second year musical is very inward. It was all about like me, you know, um, and it wasn't easy. You know, finding your voice, finding your voice. Like, it sounds very cliche, but it was it was very hard, you know? And I was literally blessed with this amazing teacher who lives in Tel Aviv. She was, like, my voice guru, you know? Mm -hmm. She, I mean, I always, like, love making crazy sounds with my voice. And it actually, it's very interesting because it's very good for your voice to, like, test it in different areas. And so yeah. I would go to her house in Tel Aviv, and she would, like, prepare me coffee. And it was, like, a whole thing. And then we would, you know, just like animal noises and all these like crazy things that would just like warm up the voice. And she changed my life. I mean, first of all, we're going to talk about therapy for a second because <laughs> I was doing therapy at the time. And next thing I know, I went from my therapist and then I go to her house and she's telling me exactly what my therapist told me. And I'm like, no, 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 mm -mm. <laughs> you know, and it's like, did you guys the talk? That lie. Yeah, like I was like, wait a minute. And I only told her months after I was like, you know, that like, you basically doubled my therapy sessions, you know, um, but everything is in the voice, you know. Um, so it was just a lot of it was it was amazing. It was really, really amazing. But um, it just she one of the things that she told me and it's something I will never forget, because I told her I would train every day. I would lock myself into a room and for an hour straight, if I tell you I was able to reach notes that I didn't even understand how I was able to do it, but she, she really taught me how to like use so many areas of my voice. My, like I was vibe, like it was just like vibrating everywhere. And mm -hmm. I was like, what? and I remember people outside when I would come out would be like, whoa, are you possessed? <laughs> you know? And it was amazing. I was able to reach like incredible notes or go really low as I was just traveling through my voice. And, um, Oh, so I told her, I said, wait a minute, I'm training every single day. What do I do when I get on stage? How do I do all that thinking? Because she would tell me when you breathe, when you finish a sentence, like she also works with a technique with the olive bays. Like she's a genius. She's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And she told me, Chaya training like when you're training, when you're, when you're doing your, when you're practicing or warming up, that's one thing you get on stage, nothing. Don't do anything. Just sing. When you work for your body, your body works for you. Let it do its thing. It's going to know. And I remember that year specifically when I, like, when I look at the recordings, I'm like, I just hear my voice doing its thing. And I'm like, you know, it just paid off, but I didn't have to think when I perform, when I performed, it was soul. Mm -hmm. The technique did its own thing because I invested that time. So you can't bring your brain into your performance. Doesn't work. Bring your soul, bring your heart, 
And when you, when you practice enough, your body will do the work. So that was, that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a balance because I have, I have students too, that I know they just, they just want to sing, you know, they're just like, and they get into it and they just like with all their heart and it's like, it's so beautiful. And then the technique stuff is like, not as interesting to them, but then they're like, but I can't reach the snow. And it's like, yeah, well you do need to like channel your mental energy toward that toward the technical aspect of it sometimes not all the time right. but a lot yes. of the times especially in the beginning when you're learning and you're reprogramming basically your muscles mm -hmm. you're reprogramming muscle memory and then right and then like you're saying so then it's there for you you've you've invested yeah. in that in that technique in your body and then it will be there for you when you're when you're going to when you express it in a soul way yes it's, yeah. it's such a huge part, I think, of um, of being a successful performer. Is that right? If you can't get away with not practicing, you just oh my can't. gosh, 100%. You just can't. I think <laughs> sorry. You know, it, <laughs> it's funny because one of my teachers, who was actually her mother, taught that amazing teacher I told you. So it was like a whole. She she was also amazing in her own way, and she told me. I would tell her, but how am I going to practice? Because I had so much going on with, you know, like with college and it was just a lot and I wasn't finding the time. I told her how, like, how many, t like how many hours a day should I practice? I was very, you know, like I was like crazy into like school and making sure I, you know, I understand everything. And, and she told me, Chaya, don't think of it that way. Just sing. Singing is your practice. And I remember it was very, imp it was very good for me to hear that because it's kind of like the idea of play. You know, um, I see we have comments coming in and I haven't yeah. been reading them. Toba said she agrees with us. Hi, everyone here. <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, Toba, you so, love experience too, yeah. Yeah, it's just the idea of play, you know? Like, we're so focused on, I need to practice, sing, you know? Sing every day. Like, watch what, you know, like, um, I don't know. Like, it, it, it shouldn't become something that's like, ooh, you know? Oh, man, um, I... Sorry, I used to play violin, right? I still play violin sometimes, but I played violin all my life and I actually went to college as a violin major. And I had this phenomenal violin teacher who was like very intense and just like an amazing player, an amazing performer. And one time in my lessons, I would just like bang my head against the wall trying to pl like play better. I just, I was so in my head about it. Exactly what you're describing, you know, in the practice room all the time, but hating every minute of it. And one lesson, I just like wasn't getting what I wanted. And he said to me, what do you like about your playing? Like what, what's there that you just love? And I was like, <laughs> you know, uh, he's like, if you, you have to, you have to find something about your sound that you love and, and play from that part, play from that place, you know, otherwise, what are we doing here? Oh my gosh, and, I love that. Yeah, and I, I it's just as applicable with I mean with everything, with anything you do really, but with singing too, like you have this is part of this like finding your voice too is cuz I also I I spent so long trying to sound like other people and I I didn't I didn't really get the opportunity even or like give myself the permission to find what I really needed to sound like or what I naturally do what my real sound is until much after I left college. Um, Cause I, you know, I went, I went into the classical program. There wasn't real in my college, there wasn't this cool program. Like you have like get to sing um, rock and pop and like everything. Like you were either a classical singer or you were in the jazz program. And I didn't know even at the time that jazz program would have been good for me. It probably would have been, but um, right. I love the technique that I got from the classical program. I'm so glad I did it. But I, I went there and like my teacher, my, I don't know if I should say this. I don't think anyone's going to know who she is. Um, <laughs> she said, whatever she said to me in my first lesson, I, I don't know if you're ever going to be a singer. Like you have a fast vibrato. I don't know if you're ever going to be a singer. Really? But, yeah. And I was so devastated, but I, but I was so determined and I, and I, and I like, I really wanted to be a singer. So I, I kept, I kept studying with her. I was like, no, please like let me in your studio and like, let me sing. And, 
And, right. I, and I didn't. So I spent four years learning technique and like shape the vowel this way. And like, you know, I learned a lot of valuable things. But at the end of the day, I was always trying to sound like an opera singer. I was always trying to sound like someone else's version of, you know, good. And um, right. I mean, there's some validity to that when you're when you're singing such a, a specific genre, like you do need certain certain techniques. But I yeah. always I think I just didn't know how to find where I was in the mix of that. And I think right. that's partially my personality too, of just like a, of, of a little bit of like pleasing others or like um, trying to find um, some, some very external, like sort of outward in sort of internalization mm. of, yeah. of like um, my craft. And um, so then after I left college, I, I was singing at a, um, at a church actually. <laughs> I, I wasn't Jewish at the time, by the way, <laughs> but I, um, that's a whole other story that I should do a live about sometime. But I, yes. I was doing, a, I was gigging. I was a, I was a vocalist in a, in a church and it was my gig and like a little jazz band and they were so, so great. And it was just me. It was just me on the microphone. And I was just like, so like loved it, but I was terrified because all of a sudden, like I got to choose how to sound. Like I got to choose what, Oh. Like, how do I sing this note? You're not telling me how to sing this note. How do I sing this note? <laughs> you know what I mean? And wow. I and like, suddenly it was like, oh, I, I can just come through, you know? And um, I think um, for all of you singers out there too, like sometimes taking space from, from the like very intense um, learning environment can be really good for like finding your own way. Because- It's very important actually. Yeah. Yeah. Did you also, you felt like once you left, you were able to? I didn't listen to music for like a year. <laughs> after music. music. No, wow. I, I remember I downloaded Spotify like, no, the truth is I didn't really listen to music in music school. And then I, no, the truth, right. So I didn't really listen to music in music school. All I was doing was listening to the music they were giving us mm -hmm. um, to listen to. And I didn't even have Spotify. I only got Spotify like last year, I think. And, um, and then I just didn't touch the guitar for a year straight. And I was, I, I, I couldn't, I mean, I, when people ask me like, what do you mean? How is that possible? I said, if you were a sushi chef, would you go home and make sushi for dinner? You would not, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, Probably not. <laughs> I just, I couldn't. And, um, I haven't written anything in a long, long time, like music wise. And I didn't sing in a long time, and um, I'm supposed to be recording something soon, and I, I'm not ready. My voice is just, it's not there. So whatever, singing a little bit every day just to, like, get back into the mode. But I just want to add something about what you said. First of all, I love that you, like, shared something so real about um, the voice being also about, you know, like, how we are, people-pleasing, or all that kind of thing, because it relates so much to the voice. Um, I think, especially nowadays, but I think everyone's like, wants to sound loud and strong. And, and I remember I, I have a lot of friends who are musicians and singers. Um, and I hear their music. And this happens with everyone who like shows me their music or any, I hear them like they usually show me and I do that as well, actually. Um, the louder songs, the stronger songs. And I'm like, give me your lullaby. Like, mm -hmm. give me that soft song you have. <laughs> and that's when, that's when I see the person. It's so much easier to see, like, wait, who is this artist, you know? And I find, I think that happened with you as well. Like, I heard a few of your songs and then you're like, nah, I have a song. It's okay, whatever. And I was like, oh, I love it because it was just subtle and simple and I think simplicity is the hardest thing for us it's so hard for us to be simple we want things to be complicated we complain that they're complicated but then we want them it's it's just very interesting the way I'm we definitely work. guilty so, of that I'm like but it's boring you're like no it's simple it's yeah simple it's is passionate. yeah yeah simple is really great and again this took me years like I had so many processes in music school so much it was very interesting, um, just, you know, all the questions and then sitting with it and then trying to understand a lot of like inner work. Um, 
So do you mind if I segue into the whole idea of like your own voice, like on a storytelling? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. So, I mean, I call myself a storyteller now because that's really my thing. In my, most of my like writing classes, I usually make my students write like a a kid's song and, Mm. or a cliche, a kid's song, a cliche song, a song with 12 words. So usually I try to get them to like, and it ends up being their best songs, even though they're like, ah, oh, we don't like this kind of, I was like, just do the exercise, you'll see. <laughs> but, um, so the, the word I want to use is authenticity. And I think it's a little bit overused these days, but it's, you know, everyone has their own truth and it takes, look, it's, it's something we work on till the end of our lives because there's no ultimate me. You know, the me is evolving. Of course, we're all going to, you know, we're on the same path, different journey, but same journey, different path. I don't remember how it goes, but (laughs) the point is that like the soul is, I mean, we're all, you know, we all have a soul and we're all going in, we're all going in the same direction. It's just taking different paths to get there. And so, I mean, looking for the ultimate me is, you know, it's a big question. Like, who am I? Who am I? It's something that we keep asking for the rest of our lives. But part of being authentic is not only, you know, singing from an authentic place is, is, is hard, but I usually tell my students, do you even, you know, when they tell me about their songs, I usually tell them, what are you trying to say in your song? I record what they say. And then I tell them, this is your song. So most of the time we're being around the bush and we don't end up saying what we really want to say again, because it's just too simple and simple is clear and it's just too revealing. So before writing good songs, it's like, when you're sitting around the table and you disagree with something or you have an opinion, do you say it or do you hold back? Mm -hmm. Start speaking your truth, not in your songs. Start speaking your truth in your circles, around your family, around your friends. Practice doing it. Practice doing that. And then your songwriting will just be wonderful. Like you won't even have to worry. And in addition, your voice will change. Why? Because you're opening those areas that, are anyways dying to get out you know Mm. like i said everything we hold back from saying gets trapped right here yeah i was just thinking about today the chakras i don't know like what oh yeah i don't really know much about them at all but i came across some post or something talking about like um opening up your throat chakra did i say yeah chakra chakra and i was like wow first i want to do more research and like what it really means and everything but that's exactly what you're saying. I think is that it gets, it can get blocked and I don't know exactly yeah. what that means energetically or whatever it is, but like when we, when we either say, you know, don't say what we mean or say things we don't mean or, or, or we just, yeah. we're just afraid. We're, we're just, even if we're just afraid of, of something of, of being um, judged or whatever yeah. it is, it, exactly. It gets held there and it can, ch- it changes yeah. the voice. Exactly like you're saying. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. I've heard, I've, I've noticed it in my own, in my own self. Right. Sure. Yeah. It's interesting because I also, I hear it now in like in my own voice or in other people's voices. I mean, I don't sit and analyze people's voices, but because I spent so much time like healing through my voice, I mean, I can write chapters about this, how like my voice was, was my instrument, but it was also like an incredible mirror into who I am and, it was, it was incredible. Um, I started noticing, like, I mean, you just, you hear it in other people, you know, like I, I'll cry more easily when I hear someone, I feel them more deeply. Cause I'm like, I, I know where you're at. Like I, you know, there's like certain yeah. sensitivities that I knew I had in me, you know, when I, when I hear my voice in my first year of school, I mean, like sometimes I hear it, I'm like, Oh, <laughs> you know, like, you know, and then years later, I'm like, wow, like your voice opened up, you know, there was a lot of like, a bit of sadness in my, you know, in my throat, in, in my, in my voice that I wasn't aware of. But what's interesting also is that you can't lie to the crowd. The crowd, you just, they see everything. You can, you can be as, you know, when I would perform on stage, I'm very good at, you know, performing, you know, and I remember you're constantly criticized in school because you're around musicians. So 
They're like, yeah, they good, they're not vulnerable enough. And I was like, stop it, <laughs> you know? So it was a lot of like, it, it was authentic. There were moments, you know, where I thought one song was better than another. But then people were like, no, we like the soft song. Like I had, I remember I performed a song, a few songs. And then like I closed the night. It was like a, we had like a bunch of concerts. I went last, I'm pretty sure. And it was a really, it's actually the song that's going in the movie. Oh. Um, it's a beautiful, really touching, very, I wrote it in one shot, one Maitza Shabbos. Maitza Shabbos is actually, Friday and Maitza Shabbos are like my prime writing. It came out in one shot. It was, anyways, I uh, performed it. And the, the, the lyrics are very touching. I mean, there was like harmonies. It was very, it was beautiful, very simple. People were bawling bawling and I was like I remember st starting to perform and I was like wait should I stop <laughs> going on, what what happened? Happened? <laughs> yeah it was very wow. yeah um so I mean yeah when you sing from your soul like it's yeah it's very interesting how like the less you try you know just let people see you you know and it's not always yeah. easy but. I think you really, I think you just said, you just said it, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, like we talk about technique, we talk about singing from the soul, like, okay, how do I merge those two? It's really sort of this willingness to see and be seen, you know, like, and, and to, and, and to be confident to say like, this is where I'm at right now. This is where I'm at today. Yeah. This is what I have to offer the world. This is my voice is my gift. And yeah, and it is what it is. And I'm gonna, yeah. you know, and I'm, and I'm going to be vulnerable with it. And that at the end of yes. the day, that it doesn't matter if you're singing soft or loud or high or low, like people respond to that. Like yeah, people, people sure. will feel in themselves as much as you're able to feel right in your own singing. Yeah, I think. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's regarding vulnerability, because it's also like a really big thing, especially like during the whole COVID thing. I think everyone spent a lot of time with themselves which is great yeah this has been totally um, an era of like everyone just sort of coming out of their shell it's yeah. amazing mm -hmm. yeah um i would say like regarding vulnerability um start with people you're comfortable with it doesn't have to be like jump into the thing and start being vulnerable in front of everyone like no be smart about it you know um start around the start with start with your own people and like, I know it helped me a lot. You know, I had like my good friends. I had my, my teacher. Yeah. I, I remember I wrote like a, a chorus for a song in her house. I was bawling and she was like, keep going, keep going. And I was like, ah! and I was like crying and writing the song. It was so find your people and do your thing. Like there's so much growth, good growth that happens in small places with, you know, like, yeah, yeah. long was about the big stuff yeah so. amazing yeah thank you yeah i want to say one more thing because i was yeah i was thinking about um just this idea that we were talking about earlier about like you can sing anything in different styles or different even different tech different qualities and different on different notes right like how do i decide how i'm going to sing this note right um because you said like I could sing something uh, here robust and chest voice or I could sing it like very soft or whatever it is and like I think um that is a huge I think for me that's a big part of finding your own sound finding your own voice like it's a it's a different it's a different sort of side of the of the coin like one is just like uh, vulnerability and just like letting whatever comes out comes out but um I think at the end of the day, like trusting yourself is a huge piece of this. And I think we've kind of said that a little bit, but about like trusting yourself to make choices about yes. how you think it should sound or trusting yourself to, to, to even to say like, Oh, sometimes it'll be this and sometimes it'll be that, you know, but yeah. it, to be yeah. in the moment, but, and, and to, to stop externalizing, I'm saying this to myself and also some people that I know um, to, to not externalize what, you know, what you think it should be like, Oh, but it, yeah. Oh yeah. They're going to like it. If it sounds like this, no, you end right like there it. In the moment you think it's that. you, <laughs> if you like it, you know, if that's how yeah. you love for it to sound, that's when they're going right. to love it. So I think yeah. that's also a huge 
part of this conversation of like just learning to trust trust yourself so I said changing my placement was a game changer in terms of finding out what my voice can do yeah. removing tension is another biggie but that's directly related yeah. to vulnerability oh yeah i love that yeah hundred uh, percent tension relating to vulnerability yes that yeah oh exactly that's, that's like that so much yeah. yeah that's it that's its own conversation i love that because we we don't realize how we hold things like have you ever noticed like after a really stressful day your shoulders are just like I don't know. that's where i carry yeah. a lot of tension <laughs> maybe not everybody but i'm just, you know like i'm hurting you know because i'm just like ah and um right the, the voice is affected the same way if we're scared if we're if we're hiding then like it's gonna get caught, like we're saying. So yeah, Tova, thanks for saying that. Mm -hmm. All right, that does anybody great. have any question they wanna throw out before we wrap this up? Thank you so much, Kaya, for yes, joining of me. Thank you. I'm like passionate about this. I love it. Yeah. So And thanks everyone yeah. for tuning in. Thank so nice you. to see all of you. Um have yeah. yeah, have an amazing night. If you guys have like questions you think of later, feel free to, you know, For sure. send us yeah. PMs or, you know, comment on posts or whatever. And we'll, yeah. um, maybe we'll have material for another live. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Thanks All so right. much. Good night. Have a good, good night, everyone. Yeah. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.